Yo, what is up guys? This is Pedro here and the Washington Commanders practice squad is basically finalized and they brought back a bunch of familiar faces including Troy Apke, William Bradley King, and Jarrett Patterson. So we're going to talk about that in today's video. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe. Also hit that like button and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Okay, so let's first go through all the players that they signed to the practice squad. Then I'll go through some of the notable guys. And also, one thing uh, to remember is they signed two corners, which I just made a video about. So after this, go ahead and check that out. But because of that, they had to make a couple, you know, make a couple roster moves. One of those was, you know, putting Curtis Hodges on IR. That was expected. I said that would happen yesterday just because there's no way you're starting the season with five tight ends on the active roster. And the other move that they made was released, uh, I think they released uh, Scooter Harris, the linebacker. So, you know, I didn't think he was going to make the team and he ended up making the team, but they released him anyways. We'll see. Maybe they, they'll probably bring him back on the practice squad. So let's go through the list. Alex Mbulo, tackle, Troy Apke, David Bada, William Bradley King, Corn Elder, Alex Erickson, Fraud Gardner, Khalid Hudson, Danny Johnson, Nolan Laufenberg, Kyrie McGowan, Mark and Michelle, Aaron Montero, Jared Patterson, and John Toth. So all those guys are familiar faces. And I think that's a good thing and bad thing. Like I would like for most of them to be familiar, but like bring in some new guys as well. Uh, because clearly like no one got claimed. None of their players got claimed showing that you know they don't have a lot of talent a talent in terms of like the depth pieces no one got claimed there's teams with like six seven players that got claimed like the jets had seven players claimed today we had none and that's just showing kind of our depth so you want to bring i think it would have been a good idea you know to maybe instead of having 15 16 guys that are all you know you played for you this you know this camp maybe you bring in 12 and then a few new guys see what you can do there but it is what it is. So let's go through kind of the main guys. Number one, let's see, do I have a tweet just for him? No, Jarrett Patterson is the main guy. Um, you know, Jarrett Patterson, I thought there was a chance he was going to get claimed, uh, but more likely than not, I thought he would not get claimed. He didn't get claimed. He was probably the most likely to get claimed out of any of their players. But the thing is with the running back position, there's so many teams with good running back cores and it just, yeah, it, it was going to be tough for him to get claimed but you know I like bringing him back in case there's an injury or maybe they have to you know do something with Brian Robinson they can bring him up they can call him up I think you have a few weeks each season where you can call up a player to the active roster and you have a limit on that but you can do it for a few weeks so they could do it that with Jarrett Patterson and a couple other players but I like that they brought him back and you know I think it's good for him as well stays with the same team and you know close to his hometown hopefully eventually he can get back on the roster Alex Erickson I love bringing him back to the practice squad because if hopefully it doesn't happen but knock on wood but if you have an injury to any of the returners like you know Dax Milne or Gibson or they're struggling at it or you know Gibson can't kick a turn because you know he has to you know get 20 carries a game if Robinson's out well you can call up Alex Erickson for a few weeks, have him as a kick returner or punt returner, and you'll be fine. That's, you know, have him on the practice squad. It's all good. Troy Apke, I really don't care. Um, you know, it's I, I'm fine with him on the practice squad. I know some people are still going to be upset. If he's on the practice squad, I really don't care. You know, just he's going to be another guy that, you know, if one of those special teams guys gets hurt, he'll be called up and play special teams. But, yeah, nothing more than that, hopefully, because if he's playing – on defense is very very concerning um, for sure and then Danny Johnson a back on the practice squad I like that move for you know he's been on the team for a few years knows the defense inside and out and you know he is I get not good depth but for, in, for, in terms of practice squad he's a quality player for the practice squad and you know if you have some injuries you can call him up still think they even though they added two more corners I think that it wouldn't be a bad idea to add one veteran corner just because, yeah, the cornerback depth is still not great. They got some more talent, I think, with, uh, you know, this, I forgot his name already, um, but they signed a corner uh, who dra got drafted in the sixth round this year by the San Francisco 49ers. A lot of people had him, like, mocked in the fourth or fifth round. He's got talent, but I don't know if he's going to be able to play right away. That's the thing, or, like, you know, be an impact player 
right away. So that is something to consider right there. And his name, I believe, is Tariq Castrofields and then Rashad Wild Goose, who was drafted the year before in 2021 in the sixth round as well. So they got some more talent, but I'm not sure about they, you know, improve their depth because these guys might be good in a year or two. Right now, who knows? They got cut for a reason. They definitely got cut for a reason. But like Danny Johnson coming back, and then William Bradley King's another guy that was a fringe roster guy who, uh, you know, I thought was going to make the team. Did not, didn't end up making the team. But he's going to be on the practice squad, and who knows if there's some injuries or anything like that, he might work his way up onto the active roster at some point. He did last year, and I thought he had a solid preseason. He's just not as talented, in my opinion, as Shaka Tony, and that's why they have Shaka Tony making the roster over him because Shaka Tony's got the talent. He's just got to put it all together. Like in the you know, in the limited snaps Shaka Tony played last year. He had some big impact plays, so uh, let's hope he can you know build on that that uh, this year. So other guys, Corn Elder, another depth corner, knew he wouldn't get claimed by anyone, and yeah, I, that's just an insurance policy. A guy that's in the system, if you have a ton of injuries, he'll uh, all these guys pretty much are going to be used for that. Only thing is they don't have that many offensive linemen. They have three. Usually, I feel like it's or actually four, but usually I feel like it's a little bit more. But they got John Toth, who knows this, you know system, Aaron Montero, and then you got Nolan Laufenberg and Alex Ikambula. And then David Bada is another guy who doesn't count towards, because a lot of people are confused about this rule. So David Bada, like some people thought he, we could get an extra player on the active roster. No, we do not get 54. We get 53. We get an extra practice squad slot. So David Bada, we get an extra practice squad slot because of him because of the international pathway program but let's say like he improved drastically next year we wouldn't be able to keep an extra roster spot for him so um but you know like that he's back it seems like his teammates love him and you know he's had some good preseason games so good to see him back and then a couple undrafted free agents and Farad Gardner uh you know some talent there and then Mark and Michelle I I really like Mark and Michelle I think that He's a guy that you can call him up from the practice squad for a game if you really need to and actually be a receiver. Seems like he has some chemistry with, you know, Heineke and Sam Howell as well. And then, yeah, so those are kind of the main practice squad signings that they made. I Again, I don't know the limit. I think it's 16, but that might be 16 with, you know, the David Bada thing. But I think they got at least one or two more uh, slots open. And they better still not be done. I think they need help at linebacker still. And they improved a little bit at corner. But I still would like them to add a corner. And then Cam Curl, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys saw it. And maybe by the time you're watching this, there's injury news on him. But he, at practice today, was in a sling. That, to me, extremely concerning. We don't know what the, injury's gonna, what the injury is or, you know, yeah. But it's concerning if there's actual news about it because... Uh, Ron Rivera is going to have a press conference after practice. If there's news about it, if there's an update, I'll make a video on that. Hopefully, I don't have to make a video because then that would mean bad news. And then one last thing, I think it's good news. And I know they said they, you know, Brian Robinson is going to go uh, talk to doctors and everything over the next couple of days. But still, he's not on the non-football injury list yet. And, you know, if they really wanted to because they had to make two roster spots because of, uh, you know, the two corners they signed, they could have put him on the list. And if they knew they were going to put him on the list, they would have put him on it already to create that roster spot. Instead, they had to you know, release Scooter Harris. So that is encouraging, and I think there's a shot he plays in the first four games. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button and turn those notifications on because still a decent amount of videos are going to happen in the next couple of days. Peace.